welcome to Out and About. My name is Vanessa Victor. Today we're going to be going to Miss Veronique Laurent's house. Um, want to know who that is? She is an amazing painter. Stick around and you'll find out a little bit more about her and the work she does. And of course, we're going to check out the entertainment highlights after that. So we'll be right back. As I told you earlier, we are with Miss Veronique Laurent. She's a painter, a very good one at that. Welcome. Thank you so much. I'm happy to talk to you. I'm happy to be with you. So can you first um, start off by telling us how you got started painting? I used to paint a lot when I was a child, but I was, well, I was told, I was told, well, I loved painting. I loved a lot. I loved to paint. And then I started with oil painting at the age of 11, which is quite unusual because uh, oil, paint, oil colors are quite difficult. And my parents bought me a box of oil colors when I was 11. I started painting quite seriously. And it was, it was really a hobby. Even when I was a teenager, I would, have an, I, was, I would have an easel in my bedroom and paint, paint, paint. I would read a lot about art history. Because I, I was a reader, I would I, I started reading books also quite early. So, but as a painter, I think I'm I'm very much self-taught. I have been to courses, life drawing, which I love, in uh, Sweden, in Italy, in France a little bit also. Life drawing, you know, with a model, you draw a model, which is very important for artists. I mean to. You, you you get your you learn how really how to draw so that was that was very but otherwise I'm self-taught I uh, I've painted almost all my life so to say but let's say I started painting on very serious basis when I came to Tanzania in 85 you know paint I mean to be a painter is something we are individuals like anyone else and uh, our path in life is differs from one end to another. In my case, it was Tanzania who really gave me the, the, and also it was in a way easier because I had my family behind me because I mean, to live on your painting is, very few can really completely live on their painting. So financially also it was a bit easier. How important was it for you to have supportive parents who supported your dream in terms of painting? It was very important because, like I was saying, when I was very young, when I was a child, they would encourage me. When I was 11, with my old colors, they, you know, and you so said that I want to boast, but they had artist friends who would say, oh, Veronique should really go on with her painting. And there was one artist, a Russian lady, a white Russian lady, who had told my tell her to paint outside, she has to start with nature. And that habit I kept a little bit. Um, for beginners, when you start with colors, it's a bit, uh, it's, uh, this is traditional, uh, in traditional painting. I mean, I'm not talking about the things that some, some people are doing now, video and so on, something different. They always tell you to paint in nature to start with, get the light, catch the colors, it can be anything, it can be a pigeon, it can be a plant, it can be... So she was saying that a lot. So, and then also I had the chance to go to Sweden in boarding school. And and there again I was surrounded by people who knew a lot about, about art, who had beautiful art at home and, and so on. So all my life I had I had support, you know. If I had been, uh, you know, that's something I always say, you know, it depends also on the circumstances in your life. Because I've been, I've been to very simple schools in Dar es Salaam, where you see very, very simple schools, very primary, basic schools. You see a lot of talented children, but if they are not supported, and it, they have the talent, but they won't develop it. The think? talent will go to waste. Yeah, exactly. So there are many people who are talented, but they somehow it wasn't. Uh, 
you don't emulate it's not the right word in English we say it in French I don't know it wasn't encouraged it wasn't they were not pushed they were you know so you talk about you use all old oil old colors I use acrylic also Pretty enough, I didn't show you anything that I did in acrylic. I use acrylic, it depends on my mood, when I want to do something very quick, very... But I I, I think oils are more... If I use the word more noble, would be would be a bit stupid to say, but they are more traditional, so to say. No, I don't think um, using the term noble would be wrong because in, in, in effect, it's a lost art. Not many people use old colors, you were telling me. A lot of very famous modern artists can be abstract or figurative. They use uh, acrylics, many of them. But you have, you have a range of painters who stick to oil. And um, but still, acrylics has its advantages also. It dries very quickly and you can, for instance, sometimes it has happened that I work only with a palette knife. You know, not the brushes. Then I love acrylic. You know, but then you can do the same with oil, also. You know, so mm. so it's a matter. It's a matter of faith, I think. I had very supportive parents in terms of, and and of course the community around you in your painting. But I'm sure there must have been challenges that you faced. To be very honest, are we always working as hard as we should? Now it depends. It depends on artists. Some artists, some you hear about famous. Even here, there are artists who paint, paint, paint all. But I had moments of lack of inspiration, lack of. Uh, but that's very personal. It's very individual. The challenge is to know that you have. If you're a painter, definitely you have a certain talent. Otherwise, you're not a painter. The challenge is that you have to work as much as possible, and you are. You're lucky enough to say. You always have something to say, to express. It's infinite. You can paint till you're 18, till you're, you know. So that that, that that's the, the the quality of our of our state of mind, our being as an artist is that we we can go on with our work for years and years and years normally. So of course there are challenges and financially of course there are challenges that would appreciation be um it is a challenge also it is a challenge appreciation appreciate for instance me personally if i have a group exhibition here in dar es salaam i might be appreciated but i'm more appreciated when i'm by my own and i know why because my style is it's very, very Western influence in the technique. The technique is Western. You see, for instance, if you talk, if you think of Tinga Tinga, the the first thing Tinga Tinga, the late Tinga Tinga, how was painted, it was totally indigenous. I would say that people who appreciate my art usually are people who who know a lot about art. But they, I mean, my paintings are not something that. Just I knew I would say, oh my God, that I love. They, well, they are far from being commercial, that I have to admit. Mm. But then, uh, isn't that part of your personality? It's, it's part of my personality. I can't change it. That's the way I am. That's the way I am. Exactly. And I have seen uh, some of your paintings. I think your personality shines through. And I think that's part of the reason why people can identify that this is your painting. Oh yeah, man. people who know me, they can, that, these are the colors of Veronique, this is the style, oh, but that's a Veronique, that's a, that, that they can, of course, they can, the ones who know me, they can do that, yeah. You've been around the world, of course. Uh, a little bit in South America, in Africa, and Europe. I would like to go to the States, but I don't know if I live, I don't know, I don't know if I live. So what was your, what's been your, you can't say Tanzania because you live here and this is home. Mm. Where, what was your favorite country to go to? You, you got there and you were just inspired 24-7. By art, I think there's a country, but I wouldn't be the first one to say Italy is very inspiring because well, there's so much art tradition. Though I've lived in France, I've lived in France. Fr France also is very, 
it's an old artistic, uh, there's a very old artistic tradition. But the circumstances in my life were uh, then so that I was, um, I was, I was working in factories. I was, I had a tough time. So I was drawing by my own at home, but never. And I was in the surrounding. Uh, I was living with the working class. It was a choice I had done with the working class. I mean. The working class, they, they, they don't bother so much. They don't have the time. I mean, they have a tough life. I mean, like in Dar es Salaam. Luckily, the, the people sur surrounding me, the people who who helped me to stretch my paintings or what, 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 here, they know my art, but in their family, they won't, they don't can't afford to buy, buy a painting. They, can't, they don't have the time to go in exhibition. They don't. They tell you they don't understand, which is also very wrong. That is why nowadays, in many places, and in Dar es Salaam, we start with with art for all, monuments, graffiti. Graffiti art is part of. So because one thing is 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 sure, any child can appreciate art. Why do you think it is that art, especially in most countries, I couldn't actually give a specific. Of course, in foreign countries, first world countries, it's a bit more because they try these museums, make it yeah, a bit of more course, available. Of course, and there's more money. There's more money for the Ministry of Culture. There's more, and the tradition is so old, old. So you see, the first museums in Europe, if you think of, I don't know, the museum, Musée de Louvre in Paris was funded. What well, the Musée de Louvre from the beginning was a palace. Okay, the, was a palace for the kings, but that was a long time ago. I think the Musée de Louvre was started in 18, maybe I'm wrong, 1820, I mean many years ago, that's an example. And in the same in London with many museums, it's an old tradition, so, uh, and there's more money, there's more, you can't expect, I mean, we have to be realistic also, us the artists in Tanzania, they are so acute priorities. In a country like Tanzania, education, uh, health, we can't, I mean, you know. So, But I know that now art is starting to be appreciated also by, because before it was, uh, I mean, artists 15 years ago, 20 years ago, they would say, Atu nausa kwa wazungu. They only sell to foreigners, oh. so. It, it's, I think it's also similar in terms of tourism. In yeah, and they mix up the tourism, but, but tourism has nothing to do with art as such, you see. So, uh, but now it's starting. I know I, I know many painters. I don't know if Gadi has... Gadi, for instance, did a very beautiful monument in St. Gerem. I've seen pictures. But I know of other artists like Minzi, like others, who work on commission, for instance. And their clients are Tanzanians, Tanzanians with money, of course, private, I mean, we shouldn't say private, people who have the means and who have a nice home. When you talked about Tanzanian culture, because the Makonde covers were something typically indigenous, like the Tinga, Tinga paintings. But who really appreciate them? It was the Europeans. But now it's about time that the Tanzanian bourgeoisie, I mean, the Tanzanian start to, they own, but they own art also, not not to buy a poster in, in New York or I don't, I don't know whom, and but something, you know. I think, yeah, that is true, because um, I've met a lot of um, my friend's parents who are oh, very, very stuck in their ways. Mm. This is how I was brought up, this is how I was That's raised, right. and this is how I'm going to be. So I understand what you mean. It's very hard to change a mindset that is. But, been but then you have others. You have old people who are very open-minded open -minded and want new ideas. Want new ideas. You have. They exist. But this is very individual. It depends. It depends. But the average, the average, they stick to their own, to their own traditions. They were the way they were brought up. The way, you know. What's the biggest change you've seen in the Tanzanian art scene? from when you arrived till this point right now? Well, I think what is good now, for instance, at Nafasi, you have a lot of, uh, you have, for instance, those art painters in residence, foreign painters coming in. So there's a there's an exchange, there's a lot of dynam dynamism, a lot of dynamism. 
I think pa- painting wise it is improving a lot. But like I was saying, we have lost the Makonde tradition. For, for, so somehow they have been forgotten. And that is sad. That was a tradition of before, in the 80s, in the 70s also, but then I was a child. I mean, I, I remember I bought some pieces when I was very young, when I was coming here on holiday. I don't even know where they are. So, <laughs> as an artist working here in Tanzania, of course, done exhibits around the country and, of course, um, in foreign countries. You've done exhibits by yourself and you've done exhibits with Group, other artists. Group of artists yeah. Which would you prefer to do? Well, it depends because sometimes you can have a collaboration. Mm-hmm. You can have. I had an exhibition with Gadi about uh, warm colors and cold colors. So I think it depends. It depends on the circumstances. But I, I think, you know, an artist has an ego also. So they have, and some of them have a very strong ego. Do you? I think uh, probably I have, but I'm um, I'm quite soft, soft tempered. I'm a soft tempered person, so, and I hope I have empathy and so for other artists. So, but Does I, that mean you don't have your temperamental moments? I have, them, I have, them. but then, oh, I have them when I paint also sometimes. <laughs> I remember once I was going to make a, I was having an exhibition, I was preparing an exhibition at. The, Mawazo Gallery, and that day I was so crossed. I had I had had problems with my money. I mean, I had a bit of my, and I said, "My God, I have to go on with that exhibit. I have to paint." So I just took a, a small canvas, and I didn't know how, where to start. Then I took a lo- an old drawing, an old drawing of, of a live uh, live course I had done in Italy, a naked woman. And then I got inspired by that. But I was so angry that day. But the painting became something. It was so before the exhibition. We put a red dot before the exhibition was open. It was on the, the invitation of people loved it. But a small thing like this. So anger is good to have also. Anger to express yourself. It was all in red colors. I was, I did it very quickly. And I couldn't expect that it became so good. It became something very good. It was really... Thank you for talking to us. If you have you. last words that you would like to tell our audience, what would they be? Why don't I paint, but just part paint? Buy colors, buy even... Don't even buy, uh, even the simplest colors. I had a teacher in, a, in an academy who was saying, it's not what you use, what is important, it's, it's your work, your talent. Start painting, start painting. Because that's something I have discovered in, in my life, is that so many people have, uh, have talent, you know, and it's so pleasurable. Thank you very much. Thank you, my dear Vanessa. Bye-bye. <laughs> We've been talking to Miss Veronique Laurent. She is, as you heard, very talented, very opinionated painter. And right now, let's go check out the entertainment highlights and we'll be right back. This weekend, Caribou Music Festival, an annual three-day international music festival created by Caribou Cultural Promotions Organization and legendary music entertainment and promotion company Limited in Tanzania will be held at Bagamoyo at the College of Arts and Culture, Tasuba. The main attraction of the festival will be a mixture of music, dance and cultural exposure whereby different artists from different parts of the world will be invited to share the stage with the local East African artists. Swahili Fashion Week has been launched in Dar es Salaam with more than 24 designers expected to exhibit different dress styles. Swahili Fashion Week is the biggest and largest annual fashion event in the whole of East Africa and Central Africa. It provides a platform for fashion and accessory designers from Swahili-speaking countries and beyond to showcase their talent, market their creativity, and network with clientele and the international fashion industry. 
the Swahili fashion we coordinator Mustafa Hassanali to the countries participating in this year's event include Kenya, Rwanda, Uganda, South Africa and the hosts Tanzania. He said this is the seventh year that the event is taking place and there has been improvement with each new year. Hassan Ali said the Swahili Fashion Week will be from 5th to 7th December this year with the winner of upcoming designer being presented on the 5th. Our must-watch film this week is Dumb and Dumber 2. Bobby and Peter Forelli finally direct a sequel starring the original dummies, Jim Carrey and Jeff Daniels, perhaps finally putting all four back on the map. Dumb and Dumber 2 follows Lloyd and Harry on a road trip. And that's it for us on this week's episode of Out and About. I hope you enjoyed what we prepared for you. And on behalf of my team, we'd like to thank you. And we hope you'll be around next week to watch another exciting episode. My name is Vanessa Victor. This is Capital Television, your channel of choice.